Hello everyone, so how you all doing? Uh, in this video tutorial, I'm gonna divide it in four different sections. The first part is going to be the way I actually execute this performance. The second part, the way usually magicians do it. And the third part, I'm gonna build these envelopes, which is uh, or wallets made of paper. And the fourth and the last part, I'm gonna be creating the wallets made of fox leather or fake synthetic leather. Uh, but let me go ahead and explain the performance, okay, the one you watch in the video. First of all, it is the French drop, okay, it seems like I'm catching the coin in this hand, but I keep it in this other one. You can do any coin uh, vanish, the one you prefer. I actually like this French drop. If you want to know the way I did it, just go to the video description. So once I really do the French drop, I drop this coin in this hand, behind the table, which I actually have a tunnel from this uh, center part to the side part of the table, which is going to slide the coin from here to here, okay? It's not actually going inside the pocket, but you'll see in a minute. So what I'm doing here, I'm pretending that I'm holding the coin over here, but I keep it over here, okay? And make sure the coin slide, it doesn't spin behind the table, because if it spins, it may get too far away from the tunnel, okay? So it's better that coin just light off your fingers. Okay, that's really important. So it, it falls right inside the tunnel. So once I do that French drop, I slide the coin behind the table, okay? And I lift my hand uh, away from the edge of the table. It's not natural gesture, okay? I don't have it in either hand at this point. I already slide it. So I just do a small production. If you want to know the way I actually did it, you go to the video description as well. I'm just uh, squeezing over here and do it slowly so you can produce a heavy amount of smoke, okay, as it is vanishing from your hand. If you want to know the way I'm producing the smoke, just go to the video description. This is a device that I actually built myself using a vaporizer, but I have all those details in this video description, okay. Uh, you can build this table. It is a folding table, which is uh, customized on my right height. Uh, but you can do it uh, without a table, actually. I was thinking about different tunnels. How maybe inside your pants, maybe by uh, blowing your stomach or sucking it in, you can drop the coin uh, behind the belt, right inside the pants, by opening and closing that tunnel, the compartment, using your belly, okay? Just by blowing it or sucking it in, you can just open and close that compartment uh, right here. And then it can go in any of the pockets or all the way inside your socks or perhaps inside the shoe. Okay? But those are ideas that I probably work it out in other videos. But uh, in this case, it seems like it's going to this pocket, but it's actually, uh, I have the wallet, the envelope, not inside my pocket, but right here in the side of the table. Okay? But I'm pretending I'm putting my hand inside the pocket. But as soon as it goes off the, the view, okay, I'm taking my hand away, okay, outside the pocket. But from here, it seems like I'm putting my hand inside the pocket because the last thing you saw my hand, it was halfway in. As soon as it goes out of the view, okay, it's already outside, okay. You just see the hand, okay, halfway in, and I'm just taking it out as soon as it disappeared from the view. Okay, and that's about it. So I'm just uh, having the, the hand outside. Now it doesn't have to be this way, but that's the way I did it. Okay, I'm just getting the, the wallet over here and sliding it off my pants, but the coin is already in here, okay, in the wallet. But I will explain the way the wallet works. That is gonna be next. And I'm gonna slide it outside open over here and do the same okay spin it the reality the way it works is because the flap this thing okay is not actually outside all right it is inside the three of them because it has the belt over here it seems like it is for a reason right but uh, for a trick to work it is because the flap it is actually inside the envelopes the wallets. Now the coin, how did the coin appear in the middle of the fabric? Well, because as you can see, when it goes inside this piece of fabric, 
over here, which is folded in three different sections. Okay? It's all the way on top. Well, because this third piece, it is right here. Okay? When I unfold it, I slide it. I'm exaggerating. You don't have to be that obvious, obviously. Just a little bit. And because this fold, it keeps the coin in the middle section. Okay? Once it's already here, the coin, I just lay it down, open it up, and it's going to show up in the middle section of the fabric. Okay? Well, let me show you very closely the main secret, how it seems to appear in the middle section of the, of the envelopes. I'm going to show you the preparation, okay? This is a piece of fabric, uh, a square piece of fabric, 6.75 inches, okay? That's the measure, 6.75 on the four sides, okay? I fold it in three sections, this way and this way, and then I just use an iron, a hot source, so it completely creates those creases. So once you already have it over here, the one of the envelopes, notice, once you fold it, there is a little pocket on the top section of the fabric, okay? That's where the coin is going in. So I put it over here, now, this is really important. I have these templates. Uh, it took me a little while to figure it out, the sizes. Uh, you can go to the video description as well. I'm gonna have the templates. You can download the templates. Uh, three downloads for our wallets and three different downloads for our envelopes. Uh, the wallets and the envelopes, they are pretty similar, but they are not the same. Why? Because the sizes are different. Uh, I will explain the letters when I get there, but let me show you the setup. Okay, you open over here the little hole, push it in, and then the lid, the flap, is going inside. Turn it over and put it inside the middle one. The flap goes inside the middle and the fabric as well. Okay, turn it over so the belt, they don't see the belt, the audience don't see the belt. And then the flap you don't put it out on the belt. The belt is just a, just a convincing way for audience to assume there is a reason. Once you already have the, the setup, the coin just get there and that's it, okay? When you open it up, the nice thing about using leather or fox leather, it is that this flap, it is really easy to open it up, okay? It bends, it rolls up really nice and really soft. There is no any specific way for me to tell you, well, buy this type of name, leather. Uh, you have to go to the store and actually touch it yourself because it may be really thin, really thick, or you have to touch it actually and have the nice texture, okay? So once you pull it out, the second wallet, don't show the front, okay? Because they won't see the flap. Open it up, spin it, show it. The last one, do the same. Open it up, spin it, and show it. And do what I just showed you, the coin uh, production in the center of the fabric. Now, the way to prevent fraying the fabric on the edges is by using glue. Don't use silicone because I believe that's too thick. So just use uh, white glue and put it on the tip and go one edge at a time, okay? One side at a time. So you don't create you don't smudge the fabric over here. It is kind of messy because I try to go too fast, but instead of stitching the fabric, I just use glue. So that's the way I perform it and the way it works. Now, the way magicians actually do it, they have the setup, the same, okay? So once you already have it over here, magicians actually put it inside their pocket without using a table. So at this point, I'm just gonna do the, the vanish, okay? And when the smoke starts producing, which is a nice distraction for our audience, okay? I just uh, got it over here and produce the smoke. Uh, I'm reaching over here to inside the wallet to put the coin or the ring. You can use any object, a small object, okay? So once it's vanished, it's gone. Um, at this point, you can just show the wallet and show the empty hand, all right? And go ahead and proceed to reveal um, again, what I just explained, the, the object, the coin, 
obviously you don't have to use a dice in case you use a coin and the audience put their initials because the audience may assume it is a duplicate then uh, you can use alcohol and any type of alcohol will remove a permanent ink marker and on a metal coin okay so you just show the ring or any coin and that's it now the reason that i prefer to use the paper instead of the leather is for two main reasons one in these letters as you can see this little belt it makes a little bit more contrast than the rest of the envelope okay because i use a sandpaper i sand the belt a little bit to remove the a little bit of the color i don't want to use ink because the ink will come off sooner or later while you're doing it or practicing it so it's gonna smudge your finger stain your fingers a little bit so because of the material the paper now this is not just regular paper the one you use in the printer and this is not a drawing paper this is a bit thicker this is more like a craft uh, paper or construction paper maybe it is cardboard paper uh, something thicker you know you can use drawing paper but it's not as stiff as probably this other paper i try with all different materials mainly because of the flap but because i came up with this design notice the flap it's not in a straight line from here to here. It's not in a straight line. There is a little curve over here on the edge compared to the envelope. The envelope is a straight uh, line over here. But this one, this flap is a curve. There is a little curve over here because when the flap is inside the envelope, this is really difficult for you to open, okay? The, the paper doesn't fold, doesn't bend really smooth as the leather. You can slide the flap really easily. And it's gonna fold that's why i like the fox leather or real leather whatever you're gonna use but it's something again you have to go to the store and touch the paper or the leather whatever is you want to build because not all leathers have the same uh, stiffness okay they all have different treatments but because of the little curve over here that allows me the finger the index finger to go under the flap instead and I'm gonna pull it out. You cannot place it again in the middle section. That's gonna be really difficult because the paper, mainly this paper, doesn't fold or bend that easily. Okay, so you have to put it over here in this little curve and it's gonna pop out the flap, okay? So that's why I like about this design. And the second reason is because of the fake flap, the secondary flap that I included in this last and third envelope. Okay, let me open it up over here. Um, this flap, once you already open it, I cannot show the front again. So I included it on the third and last envelope instead of the first one because in case I have the first one and, you know, let go, the audience can see the other side. So I just do it on the last one because the last one also, it will seem to be more complicated to close it instead of the first one. So that's why I did it on the third and the last envelope as a convincer. You know, and I show it like this very quickly. You don't have to do this in real life performance. Uh, it's just in the camera, so because it's more difficult to see the, the fake flap. Turn it over and open it up. And again, this is really important. Don't open it this way. It has to be open towards you because if you open it sideways, the audience is gonna see you're squeezing and they can see the gap uh, quite easily. So you, it has to be more towards you. And then go ahead and open the flap. Don't show the front in this, uh, in this case. And you probably don't have to say anything about the flap. Just open it casually. They already know it is closed when you show the front. When it's closed like this, when you show the front, they can see. And then just open it up and move the flap all the way in the back and do the last part of the, the trick, which is a little piece of the fabric, okay? And once you already leave it over there, because it is the third and the last envelope, you can just place it on your pocket. And so the audience, they don't examine the last one. They can examine these other ones, but if they examine these ones and not this one, it may look suspicious, but in that case, then use the leather one. Everything is examinable. There are no secret compartments. So now let's create the envelopes. This is the main uh, template. There is one template per sheet, okay? So obviously this is not the right paper that I'm uh, recommending you to use, but I want you to see 
the, the templates, you can download them in this video description and make sure you print them from inside the PDF file. Uh, the PDF Microsoft Reader is a free software that you can download and then print it from inside that file so the envelopes comes at the right size uh, that I am intended to be, okay? So they don't come in any larger or smaller. The paper, these sheets, it is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. This is the typical US uh, standard uh, size, all right? I don't know if your country uses a different size, but you can modify it. Uh, the point is, um, this is the typical design. This is the envelope and this is an extra flap. I will explain why I'm including the extra flap besides the reason the one I already explained in this video performance a minute ago. I already printed, okay, directly from the printer. Uh, the ink is a little darker than the sheet. Maybe you can barely see it. From my perspective, I can clearly see the, the line. So I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, so this is uh, the template. And as you can see, the inner lines, these are the lines that I'm gonna be folding the envelope, okay? And I'm gonna use a glue stick, okay? Now, that's good enough, this is uh, strong enough, but I'm gonna use this uh, white sheet just in case I go over the envelope. So I'm just gonna apply it on the flap, okay? Make sure it doesn't go into the envelope. Both sides. And before I put them together, I'm gonna add this little flap, okay? Now, obviously, like I mentioned before, you can use a sandpaper. So this little band makes a little bit more contrast. So you can do it before you glue it on the envelope or you can do it after. So in this case, I'm gonna do it after and I'm gonna sand the belt so you can see the way I did it in case this happens to you. Let me tell you this. The reason I originally include this secondary flap, it was because I have this prototype that I actually have because this is a drawing paper, but this is not. This is more like construction paper. This is more stiff than drawing paper. Now, some people ask me what kind of drawing paper I'm using. When I say drawing paper, there is no number that I'm aware that I can give you for a thickness of the sheet. It's just drawing paper and by default, it's supposed to be thicker, maybe two times thicker than conventional paper, printing paper. But construction paper is about two times uh, thicker than drawing paper. So perhaps this is three or four sheets of this little flimsy paper. And when you glue it, just give it about uh, five to ten minutes. Okay, so it completely dries. So I'm going to be using a uh, sandpaper. Uh, again, because of the situation, I already used marker and I tried to use the printer. But because of the material of the paper, maybe through time, uh, it's not as much your fingers. So my solution, what I was thinking, is uh, remove the color so it makes a little bit more contrast than the rest of the envelope because right now it's kind of hard to see the, the belt, you know. I want to make a little bit more contrast. In this case, I tried to use a different color so it makes contrast, but I don't really like the color of the belt in this case, all right? So in case you place it, you can get any uh, paper, you can put it right under the belt and the grid size is 220. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this paper for protection purposes. Well, surprisingly, this is not giving me an even decoloration. Uh, the way I did it with this one uh, because of the paper. I'm glad this is happening so you can see that it may not be the same for all the papers. Okay, right there is getting there. It's not completely even the surface. I need to go a little further, but you get the idea. You have to start breaking down the flap so you can 
it starts creating creases at least right over here on the curve of the flap. So the finger may go under the flap and pop it out more easily, okay? But like I mentioned in this video performance, um, the secondary flap, instead of using it on the drawing paper, you can cover, you know, the coin. In this case, I'm using a penny, just so it makes the flap a little heavier. If the finger can get into the flap, right under the flap, and pop it out, okay? So they don't see the coin, and that's why I'm adding an extra flap on top. So again, the reason I'm using the fake flap only in one envelope is so the three envelopes, they don't become really suspicious in case they take the first one. And also I'm adding the fake flap on the third envelope because it looks more convincing and more difficult to close in case the audience assume the envelopes are already open. I'm just gonna show the third envelope and it's gonna be more convincing than the first one, okay? But I don't wanna do it on the three envelopes just in case somebody grab them. And because it's also the last one, and when I take the little piece of fabric outside of the little uh, envelope, distracting the audience from this secondary flap from examining, because I already have the piece of fabric over here uh, ready to reveal the coin or the ring. So audience is gonna be more distracted on the fabric than the envelope. That's why I also added on the third envelope. So it's more distracted and their attention is away from this. And you can leave it outside but if you are not secure, just get the three envelopes and get rid of them, okay? And that's it. But make sure that the fake flap, it is glue right here, just on the edge, just over here on the top edge, okay? Don't, you don't have to glue it throughout the whole uh, flap, just over here the top edge, and make sure it's perfectly even, okay? So when you show the back, they don't see two pieces of uh, cardboard construction paper over here and duplicate the creases from the fake flap to the real flap, okay? Because when you practice, you will create some creases. That's the consequences of practicing with paper instead of uh, leather or synthetic leather. Now, in the last part of the envelope, you know, when I take the little piece of fabric, make sure the fabric doesn't stretch. You have to go to the store and touch the fabric as long as it is no latex or it doesn't stretch make sure it does not stretch. It has to be rigid, maybe normal, okay? I couldn't see any name for a fabric, but I believe as long as it doesn't stretch, it will work. However, I was practicing using this uh, paper instead of fabric. The only issue is that the creases are too stiff. And when you have the coin over here in the upper pocket, it's gonna be more difficult for a coin to slide from the top section to the middle section, okay? It's not impossible, I make it work, but uh, using that little piece of fabric is really inexpensive. So the next section, the last part of this video, is gonna be creating the wallets, okay? So just pay attention to this last four part of this video, because I will not talk. I'm just gonna show you the text, make sure you read it, and that's gonna be uh, really important for the creation of the wallets and the things that I learned. So that's it, and thanks for watching this video.